Hi guys, welcome. My name's George Kimura. Uh, look, we are in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. I am bored shitless at home, so I thought I'd make a few videos just for some tips and stuff and just experiences that I've had in the nearly 20 years that I've been in hospitality, owning venues and so forth. So what I'm gonna talk about today is do cocktail competitions help your career? Now, this is my personal opinion, doesn't mean I'm right or wrong, but I just wanna tell you some of the stories and things that, the way that comps have definitely helped my career. So I'm from Geelong and the first cocktail bar that I owned was called Cloud9. And being someone that was a little bit older, so I didn't get into hospitality until I was 32. I think I was about 36 by the time that uh, I started doing cocktails at Cloud9 and stuff like that. So I was pretty inexperienced. I was a lot older than a lot of people in the industry uh, at that time. And also being about 80 to 100 Ks away from a major city, I found it was a little bit harder for me to get known and I don't know, for some reason I did want to be uh, known in the industry and so forth, probably a little bit ego driven and, and so forth, but it's just honestly how it was back in the day. I can remember entering every single cocktail competition that would come out. I'm talking every comp up to like 20, 25 cocktail competitions every year. And for the first five years, I did not get caught up once to be able to present my cocktail. It was just always just knock back, knock back, knock back. It was really bloody frustrating, but I kept being persistent and so forth, okay? I finally, uh, in my sixth year, got into the Jägermeister Master of the Hunt National Final, got to present on stage for the first time, and uh, my manager at the time, Pete, we actually won the comp, and that was the first competition that I won. From then on, uh, I set myself a bit of a goal to win a comp every year and so forth, which uh, I've been really lucky to, to do. Mostly I've been lucky enough to travel all around the world in cocktail competitions, representing Australia and so forth. But um, I'm not just going to talk about me, but I just want to give you a few tips on, on things um, like how to become known, because sometimes uh, a lot of venues, they tend to look out for these people that are doing well in cocktail competitions because when you're competing and winning cocktail comps, it's, a, it's really good advertising and, and, and branding for the venue that you work at. Unfortunately for me, uh, sometimes that's not a great thing because at the 18th Amendment Bar, our team are right into cocktail competitions and competing all the time. And what we have found is uh, some of the staff do get poached from the Melbourne bars because they are up and comers and starting to do well. But um, I'm kind of proud about that. Uh, you know, my managers and, and all the staff helping each other. It's, it's, it's a really great compliment for our venue. So it's kind of funny because I have never worked in a venue that I haven't owned. So I never really had a mentor that could help me all the time. I used to turn up to all the master classes and I remember Manny Turon watching his, his video series and I can even remember going to bar show in Auckland and sort of following Jason Crawley and Dylan and, and so forth. I was a bit of a groupie at that age, which was probably a little bit kind of weird, but I was super keen on learning. And I can remember asking to do work shifts at bars in Melbourne for free just to get a bit of experience and learn more and I was constantly knocked back. It was really, really frustrating. So I thought, well, how am I going to uh, actually get a little bit better apart from watching YouTube and Google because that's pretty much how it was. I was self-taught. And so I thought cocktail competitions are the way to go. And after all that time, I, I, I did win the Jaeger one. I set myself that sort of challenge to keep winning. And um, it was in around, uh, I think it was 2013 that I went to a masterclass for G Vine Gin that was at the Gin Palace. And loved the gin. Uh, Simon uh, was over from the UK talking about the gin as well. And they said that they had a thing called the Gin Connoisseur Program with G Vine, which is a great competition. I'd never heard of it. Um, so I went home and Googled it. Checked out this competition. I'm like, holy shit, this is awesome. You know, it's like five challenges, oh, sorry, seven challenges in four days in Cognac, France. The judges were Dale DeGraff, Philip Duff, uh, Gaz Regan. Um, rest in peace, Gaz. Like, yeah, it's so sad that you're gone. Like, the whole industry uh, loves you and misses you. Um, and I went home. Uh, or I went to the bar the next day and I started, I ordered in a bottle of G Vine and I started working on cocktails and I can remember my staff and my kids at the time saying, Dad, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm going to learn everything about gin because you see part of one of the challenges were that you had to do some written exams about gin and so forth and they're looking for the 14 best 
gin bartenders in the world to compete for this competition. This was around October in 2013 and the comp wasn't until around June the following year. So the fact that I went home and just said, I'm gonna win this competition, I'm gonna represent Australia. Uh, everyone thought I was crazy, um, but I really just, kept learning and so forth and started preparing myself for this competition. How was I going to get noticed? Okay, so, so many great bartenders at that time, everyone in the finals were from Eau de Vida, from Black Pearl, the Everly, all these venues that I look up to and still look up to, and I just felt that I didn't have a chance. So um, I started doing things like uh, taking photos of G-Vine bottles uh, in certain places. I can remember going on holidays in Thailand and putting the G-Vine bottle on the, on the sand uh, and just sitting there for two hours with my camera waiting for the sunset to drop so it was in the center of the bottle. Ridiculous shit, but I would post that on their Facebook page and on mine and tag them and so forth. So I wanted to get recognized and, and this is the way that I thought that I was going to do it because nothing else was really working previous to that. So the competition comes around and I think it was about March the following year, I entered, I got through uh, to be able to represent in a final and the, the finalist was gonna win a trip to Cognac, France and obviously represent Australia. When I got to the final, I kind of shit myself because all the bartenders that uh, I looked up to and still do now, you know, your Joey Ties and uh, and stuff like that, were all there competing. I'm like, holy shit, you know, like I'm, first time I'm gonna compete against these amazing bartenders. But I was prepared, you know, I was committed. I really wanted to, to win this and uh, I ended up winning. Okay, so, and when they come around and judged, I remember even it was Philip Duff came down, he was over from New York and he said, you're the dude that, you know, does all those photos and that's like, yes, that's me. And uh, it probably did help because I was doing a bit of branding and, and sucking up, I guess, but it was the way that I had to get recognized to, to get through to that next level. So I was lucky enough to represent, went over, uh, Mike Tomasic from Sydney represented Australia as well. We had a blast. I got to meet incredible bartenders from all over the world. I got to meet the people that I idolized in the industry. Uh, as I said before, your Dale DeGroffs and, and Gaz Regans and so forth. And um, it really opened up a lot of doors. I came third in that global final, in my first final, uh, global final. I was super, super, uh, happy about that and it was just such a fantastic time being away for those few days as well. So after the G-Vine uh, Gin Connoisseur program, that cocktail competition opened up everything uh, as far as my career went. All of a sudden, um, people were starting to uh, not, not more recognize you and it's not that I was just after recognition, oh, I'm probably lying, I, I probably did want a bit of recognition. Um, I feel that before that, now looking back on it, for those five years, all those entries that I entered, they were pretty shit, okay? But I thought that I was a lot better than I was, okay? I was the first cocktail bar in Geelong. People were loving what they were doing, like we were doing and sort of getting a bit of a, a big head. But when you really went up against the bartenders and what I was doing, I definitely didn't deserve to get into anything pre that, although I believe that I always said I did. So I got a job as the uh, G-Vine Gin brand ambassador for Australia. It was a one year deal, which is fantastic. I got work with South Trade being a trainer. Uh, since then, it just opened up a lot of opportunities. Once you tend to win that first competition, it becomes easier to get into the next ones and it sort of starts snow snowballing. And it sort of starts snowballing. Uh, from then, uh, look, I don't know, we, we've done OP, uh, Global Final in Morocco, which is fantastic. The Martin Miller's Gin Cocktail uh, World Final in, in Iceland. I got to represent uh, in New Zealand with Damien Koss, my manager at the 42 Below Earth Cup. There's a couple of others there that I can't remember about, but um, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, one of the big things with competitions as well is, yes, they can definitely help your career, but they can really hurt your career as well. When you win a cocktail competition, don't be a fucking dick afterwards, okay? Winning a cocktail competition doesn't mean that you're a better bartender. It doesn't mean that you're any better than you were beforehand. I call it the cocktail competition win hangover and I've been guilty of it as well. So what happens is you get to fly to a country or represent a, a national final in Sydney or whatever. You come back, you enter the next cocktail competition 
and you don't get through. And you start saying, oh, you know, this is bullshit. I didn't get through because blah, blah. And you come up with all these different reasons why. But the thing is, you just weren't good enough for that comp to get through. I've seen this so much with some of my staff and some of my friends that I compete with and so forth. Remember, every cocktail competition is different and they have different criteria. And just because you've won, you could win a global final. It doesn't mean that you're going to get into every final from then onwards. Another thing that I learned is a lot of times with cocktails that you use in cocktail competitions, I find that if I put them on a menu, they don't really sell that well. Because when you're making a cocktail for a competition, you're sort of going a little bit out there and you're making cocktails for people that have a different palate, maybe even a better palate than a lot of our consumers. So be careful there, just because it won a comp or anything like that doesn't mean that customers are going to like it. So I guess my biggest advice for you is stay humble, be persistent, try, try and try. If you fail, just keep entering and so forth. If you're passionate about it. Some people enter a comp and just go, oh look, I really can't be stuffed with that. It's for some, it's definitely not for others. Keep in contact with those people that you've uh, competed with because one of the best parts that I like about comps is just watching what the other competitors and, uh, are doing. I've picked up so many incredible ideas from them. So use it as a learning tool. Don't be a pretentious twat. I've heard that there are actually people that are competition bartenders. They only compete, uh, they don't really bartend much. Um, you really need to be bartending all the time. I've been a little bit guilty of that towards the end of my career because I'm not bartending as much as I used to, a bit older, slower. All, the, all my bartenders are way better than, than I am, so it's pointless me being behind there. I feel like I'm just uh, an anchor behind the bar. Be respectful to everybody, okay? Uh, the judges, the other competitors, the venue owners of where you're competing at the time because these are the things that will get you more recognized and liked in the industry uh, than winning a competition. As far as cocktail competition tips, be prepared, okay? Study, repeatedly go over your presentation, okay? Get your friends and family to watch. I know it kind of feels weird, but it's really important that you do that. You'll find that after a certain amount of times that you're up competing, it becomes really natural for you. Uh, but I always have scripts, so not everything exactly written down how I'm going to talk in my presentation, but just little pointers, okay? There's nothing wrong with having that on a notepad behind the bar that you can look down to if that helps at the start. Be yourself, show some personality. For me, it's all about entertaining uh, the judges. I honestly believe that uh, the majority of, of the comps that I've been in, my drinks are the weakest point. I tend to be a little bit strong with presentation. I like getting up there and acting like a bit of an idiot and so forth. Some of you guys might have seen some of the, the comps that I've been in, but that's just my personality. I'm a bit of a bogan and so forth. I am from Geelong, so um, for me, it's all about having a, a, a laugh and having a bit of a good time as well. Prepare on the day, okay? So normally what will happen in a competition is you'll have like two or three minutes to set up. I have never found in a competition yet to date, and I've competed in a lot of comps, where if I've gone over those two, three minutes, they said, no, nope, that's too late, you've got to start right now. I make sure that I have everything there in front of me. I make sure that the hero, so if we're doing something with a Glendronic 12, that's going to be up the front always, uh, because they're the ones that are paying for this cocktail competition, the brands, and they really want some of that branding and advertising in your presentation. One of my tips is before I'm about to present, I go through and make the cocktail in my mind and grab every single ingredient and make sure that they're in front of me. I've seen uh, competitors, and I've done it before personally, where, uh, for example, sugar syrup, uh, I haven't had it all set up, and when I need to go and, f and use a sugar syrup during the competition, I look down, it's not there. I start panicking. I ask the, the bar back that's next to me saying, oh, where do you guys keep your sugar syrup? And before you know it, two or three minutes are gone, just looking for that. So go through and say, okay, I'm making this cocktail. I need, is the spirit there? Is the mixer there? Is my shaker there? The strainer and so forth. Really, really important to go through that. As I said, if it takes a little bit longer to get ready, don't stress. I normally will have my tray of everything with all my ingredients set out anyway but make sure that you set it up i do things like have them all set on one side and then when i pour that ingredient i'll drop it down so that i don't miss anything i make sure that every single ingredient is used that works for me anyway have fun look at the judges look in their eyes 
have a look at everybody in the crowd, okay? Draw from the crowd, get them fired up, you know, because that adrenaline uh, really helps as well. Make sure that whatever the spirit or liqueur that you're using in the comp is the hero of the drink, okay? If you're making a cocktail in a Glendronic competition and you can't taste it in there, you're not gonna win. One of the big mistakes that I see with a lot of competitors in cocktail competitions is they might make this really cool syrup or, or a shrub or something like that, and they may spend two or three minutes talking about how they made that, and they'll spend about 20 seconds talking about the product. The brands wanna hear about their product, okay? They're gonna be sending you to Miami or New York or something like that to compete. They want to know that you know about their product, so really get your brand knowledge happening. Get some nice glassware too. Nice glassware looks good, uh, but a big tip, because I've learned this the hard way, if you are traveling interstate or internationally and you need three vessels, for example, three types of glassware, which is pretty standard, two to three that you'll need in the comp, pack four, pack five, wrap them, and wrap them again and again. I've had broken glassware I've been internationally and not been able to use a glassware and lost points and I've come second and third in global finals a few times and a lot of times it could have just even been because of the broken glassware and obviously having broken glassware I had to use the glassware that was used at the venue and it didn't look as nice. Another thing is if you're taking your own liqueurs, spirits, bottles or anything like that uh, definitely take them in the bottle but what I do nowadays is I pour some into a vac seal bag and seal it because I've had broken bottles as well. Uh, I had to turn up to a competition in Morocco. I'd gone and made this amazing uh, plum sort of syrup. The bottle broke in my luggage and I wasn't able to use that ingredient and I couldn't find anything in Morocco at the time to make it. I had to substitute for something else and my drink wasn't that great. So back seal the bags as well. Think about what you're going to wear, okay? Make sure if you've got a nice vest, a nice shirt or anything like that, wrap that in some bags, tape them up. I know it sounds weird, but I had a time when once uh, one of my ingredients broke and all of that, it was Fernet Branca, uh, ended up all over one of my shirts that I was gonna use in my presentation. Had to use a crappier shirt on the day, so wrapping it up. Be prepared that anything can happen to you, uh, because it will. If you vac seal and you have your ingredients and your bar tools and stuff like that, if you can, take it on your carry-on luggage. Um, as I said before, anything can happen. Uh, my luggage was lost when I got to Cognac in the first comp. Everything arrived on the morning of the comp, which was pretty stressful as well. So prepare for anything. Another cool thing is uh, if you are competing in a, a national final or an in international final is you already know who you're competing against, reach out to them in Facebook, say hi and so forth. Check out their social media just so that when you meet them the first time, you already know who they are and what their name is and that really helps as well because it's kind of weird when you turn up to a country and you don't know anyone um, and it's sort of a little bit of an icebreaker. Uh, I can remember Mohammed, one of the uh, competitors from uh, Singapore, I saw him uh, in Paris and we were heading to Bordeaux and then Cognac and I walked up and said, hey, I'm Mohammed or Irwan. Uh, how are you going? I'm George from Australia and it's like, oh wow. And it's because I'd, I'd been a bit of a stalker and, and just saw who my uh, fellow competitors were. I think I'm running out of tips. Ice is a big one, okay? Do not just be uh, reliant on whatever the ice is going to be at the venue. I can remember competing in a comp once. I went to make a stirred down cocktail and it was holy crap, the ice that they had was just sort of like crushed ice. It was really horrible and it over diluted my drink as well. So what I do from now on is I will either take molds. Um, I've even wrapped a massive solid block of ice uh, over and over and in bags and taken it overseas so I could have clear ice. It does hold for the 24 hours and when I got there, I put it back into a freezer and carved out my, my ice rock. Um, so think about that as well. Don't think that they'll have glassware. Don't think they'll have a strainer or a shaker. Don't think that they'll have good ice. Everything, it's all up to you. There's no excuses because everybody else that you're competing against, if they're experienced, already know that and that can be the difference between winning and losing. So all right guys, I've been waffling on for a little bit too long. I hope this helps and guys, look, subscribe. Uh, hit me with a like or a comment. If there's anything that you'd like to talk about regarding to hospitality and the industry and so forth, comment, reach out on Facebook and so forth and uh, hope to see you all out in the industry soon.